Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now ARM has released a whole bunch of new stuff, new CPU cores, new GPU designs. And so this is one of several videos looking at all the new stuff. And in this video, I'm gonna be looking at the Cortex-X2 and the Cortex-A710. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so ARM has released a whole bunch of CPU and GPU stuff. On the CPU side, we've got the Cortex-X2, got the Cortex-A710, and we've got the Cortex-A510. And then for the GPUs, we've got the Mali G710, the Mali G510, the Mali G310. Now, I've got a separate video about the GPUs. I'm doing the Cortex-A510 in its own separate video because I think it's an important chip to have as a look at. And this video, we're going to be looking at the Cortex-X2 and the Cortex-A710. Now all the CPUs have now been upgraded to the ARM V9 architecture as we anticipated if you saw my video about the ARM V9 architecture. And the reason for that is that when you have a heterogeneous CPU design, that means different types of CPU cores, some power efficient, some high performance, inside of a processor, you want to have a task, an app to be able to jump from one processor to the other without there being any difference in the features or the way the architecture works. So now ARM has given all of its CPUs in the A range are now at ARM V9, which means the power efficiency cores and the high performance cores are all there. And so now we can get a whole bunch of new processors based purely on ARM V9. Now, if you look at the top level figures, ARM are saying that a flagship processor in 20, 22 probably announced maybe sometime in 2021 will have 30 percent more uh, performance than a flagship processor from 2021 so of course we're looking at the snapdragon 888 the exynos 2100 both of which include the cortex x1 and the cortex a78 and the reason for that is because you've got the x2 that's giving us a boost in performance you get a boost in performance from the uh, cortex a710 and also a boost in performance from the cortex a510 and when you do those things together then you're actually going to get an overall 30 percent boost in performance when it comes to just the x2 on its own we're looking at a 16 percent boost in performance compared to the x1 if everything else is the same so the same manufacturing process the same clock speed the internal changes the micro architecture means the x2 is 16% faster than the X1. So how has ARM done that? Well, lots of changes on the internal design, and we'll look at some of those features in a moment. Of course, we've got ARM V9, which means we've got improvements with SVE2, which means better uh, DSP, better machine learning performance. And also an interesting thing about the X2 is it's a 64-bit only CPU, no 32-bit mode. And I'm planning on doing a video called 32 Bits is Dead, so do watch out for that video. So at the front end of the Cortex-X2, we have some improvements to the way the branch prediction is working. Now, for several generations of processor now, ARM have decoupled the branch prediction from the fetch, which means the fetch can run ahead and get what it needs to do into the caches and the branch prediction is working independently. However, now there's better branch prediction technology, larger branch prediction states, and also an alternative path predictor, which means when you've got those hard to guess cases, will it go one way or the other? In fact, the fetch can go ahead and start to get the stuff going for either case. And then actually that does help in the overall performance. And you can see here on this graph, the differences between the uh, misses, MPKI means uh, miss predictions per thousand instructions. You can see that on the X1, it was a fairly smooth path there, but now using this newer technology, although it's much more uh, jaggedy, they're all under the path there. And in some cases, a significant improvement in the number of uh, misses, the reducement in the number of misses, which of course is a good thing. The X2 remains an out of order core, as we would expect, it's a 10 stage uh, pipe. And also when you talk about out of order, then the uh, processor needs to have a window that it can look ahead. How far can it go ahead to try to see what other instructions it can execute out of order, not in the order they are in the program. And to improve performance, there has been an increase in the size of that. And that's actually quite complicated because the more you look, the further down the code you can go. And obviously keeping all that information synced up is actually pretty complicated. And then because this is ARM v9, you do have SVE2, and that's been implemented here using 128-bit uh, vector lengths. 
And at the back end of the X2, we see an increase in the load store structure size. And what that means is that basically there's been more logic given over to running parallelization of the load and store stuff. And therefore that helps again in kind of executing those instructions, getting the load and stores back and forth from memory. And that ultimately improves overall performance. Now here is we're talking about that 16% figure that I was mentioning earlier. Now the big thing to note here is that with the X2, you can now have eight megabytes of L3 cache. So 64K L1 cache, one megabyte of L2 cache, and eight megabytes of L3 cache. With the X1, it was only four megabytes of uh, X1 cache. So the difference in the 16% is to do with the caching as well as to do with the micro uh, architectural changes. And as we can see there, because of SVE2, we've got a two times boost in uh, machine learning performance. And this final graph here gives a kind of a representation of the difference between the power and the performance uses of the X1 and the X2. As you can see, down in the low power stages, we're kind of the line is they're just on top of each other. You've got that same kind of performance. But then as you start to up the power, you're actually getting more performance out of the X2 for the same power. Uh, usage and ultimately in the end you can actually even extend the power usage a bit more and actually even get greater performance. So the uh, X2 is a uh, an improvement, a significant improvement over the X1. So the Cortex X1 was found in the Snapdragon 888 and the Exynos 2100 and you'll just find one of them and then next to it three Cortex A78 courses, one plus three kind of situation. We're probably going to see the same kind of thing for uh, smartphone processors for uh, next year. So we're going to have one X2 processor and then three Cortex A710 processors. So let's look at the A710. So the A710 is the uh, successor to the A78. Again, ARM V9, we're looking at a 30% energy efficiency change, 10% boost in performance, and then twice the uh, ML performance increase, again, due to SVE2. So in terms of the overall configuration, we have a very, very similar setup in terms of the cache sizes as we did for the Cortex-A78. However, there have been some changes to boost that performance, general improvements, again, to the branch prediction. I'm sure they're borrowing some of the technology there from the X2, and then the uh, increase in the capacity that means more silicon, more hard work, but if you get it all in sync, if you get it all, those clocks working nicely, then you've now got this uh, greater capacity for the branch prediction, and branch prediction means that you're getting better performance. You're not getting any gaps, any bubbles uh, in the pipeline. The uh, A710 is a five wide core compared to a six wide core of the A78. It's also a 10 cycle, 10 stage pipeline, just the same as the X2. And those kind of things also help improve the efficiency as well as improve the performance. And if we look here at a similar graph that we saw between the X1 and the X2, this is now between the A78 and the A710. Again, you can see that during the lower power stages, we can see they're basically the same kind of performance. In fact, the uh, A78 is actually using less power for the same level of performance. And then as we get to the right, we can see less power being used. So 30% less being used there, but a 10% performance increase. And in fact, again, you could even push the A710 maybe even a little harder and get even more performance out of it. So again, a good upgrade from the previous generation. So as I mentioned, we're probably gonna see the X2 in a kind of a one plus three plus four. So that's one X2, three A710s, and then four A510s. But there are some other potential configurations. So depending on whether you're looking at laptops or wearables, for example, we could have a four Cortex X2 set up with four Cortex A710, no efficiency calls at all. That would be permissible when you have a laptop, bigger battery, better thermals. In fact, ARM says it's even possible to make an an octa-core version with the X2 that's fully supported and something that would be open for their partners to make. And then for companies that don't have access to the uh, Cortex-X custom program, then there is a possibility of four uh, A710s along with four uh, A510s or even a two plus six, something we often see in the mid-range of Qualcomm's uh, process the 600 series, the 700 series, and so on. And then even at wearables or even at uh, very price sensitive uh, smartphones, we could see quad core or octa core A510s, but we'll talk more about that in the Cortex A510 video. 
So what does this mean for future purchasing decisions? Next year's flagships, maybe you want to upgrade. Well, the X2, 16% more performance just on its own. When you couple it with the A710 and the A510, the whole processor should be up to 30% faster, certainly more power efficient. So the next generation of smartphones are really quite exciting of what we could see from Qualcomm and from Samsung. Talking of Qualcomm and Samsung, if these companies follow the same cadence, the same pattern that they've had in previous years, then it would mean that Qualcomm will announce a new Snapdragon processor, probably using the X2 and the A710 and the A510 sometime in December. And then in 2022, we're gonna see smartphones from companies like uh, Samsung, OnePlus, and so on, using these new cores. So as always, arm of announce now, the OEMs, Qualcomm and so on, will announce later in the year. And then, what is it now? Six months from now, we're gonna see actual devices in our hands. And as always, it will be really interesting to do some testing to find out how well those uh, processes are actually doing. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. As I said, other videos in this series about all the other stuff that Arm has announced, really you should subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification icon, and then you'll know when those videos are available. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.